According to the Bullock Times, October 18, 1917, prices advanced at the Musu Theater from 5 and 10 cents to 10 and 15 cents. According to the Bullock Times, October 18, 1917, T.H. Waters of Brooklyn lost 18 head of cattle in an unusual way Saturday. He allowed them to graze on his potato vines following a heavy frost and in a short while they were dead. According to the Bullock Times, January 2, 1919, Lydia, the faithful servant at the home of Mr. J.A. McDougald, is off to Burke County for a few days to visit her grandmother who is ill. Lydia knows how to appreciate grandmothers because she is one herself. She is reaching well up to the 70 year mark. Then how old is her grandmother? Nobody, not even the grandmother knows. According to the Bullock Times, October 24, 1918, to have lived for nearly a century at one place and finally to pass out within a few feet of the place of her birth was the unique distinction of Miss Mary Lanier, who died last Saturday in the upper edge of the county. Miss Lanier was 89 years of age and was born on the same farm and within 30 feet of the very spot at which she died. It's time. Time to learn. Time to advance. Time to earn your degree. How? With Georgia Southern University Online. Flexible and respected. Business, education, healthcare. Earn your degree on your schedule anywhere in the world. Respected professors at a respected institution. Your choice. Your future. Apply today at online.georgiasouthern.edu. It was the Great Depression and World War II that brought on so many of those changes and hard times. Hard times for the collective community. But for some, they were very personal too. I lost my brother who was 17 months younger than me in World War II. He finished at the University of Georgia and was drafted. And he went down in the Philippines in 1945, January of 1945. He would come in and you gunned the telegrams off. And see, I got the telegrams for all the boys killed overseas, wounded, and um, so one Saturday, John Darley was killed, I don't remember which, and the next Saturday, the son-in-law was killed. But there were other times, when some of the ladies were just young girls, when Mother Nature was the one to bring about tragedy and panic. I barely can remember going to ride with my parents, and they went to see where the tornado struck. I well remember it, 1929, I was eight, no, I was born 1990, I was 10 years old. I remember that my mother put every chair she had against the doors, and they blew doors, chairs, and all away. And the debris, it took for weeks and weeks to clean it up. And it was in Candler then, it could have been Bullock, you know, then they split Candler and Bullock. People were just devastated, they'd never seen anything like it. Of course, I can remember when we had a hurricane when I was a child that was real strong. I barely can, but I remember riding to them, going to see where the tornadoes, you know, them talking about it. It would be a little over a decade after the tornado of 29 landed in Bullock County when something very different would land in our neck of the woods. During the Second World War, the farmers would go into town and bring the uh, German prisoners out to work in their fields. They were spread across fields tending to the crops all over the county. They, uh, they, in fact, some worked on Dad's farm uh, gathering peanuts. They had a big high wire fence about two or three miles from our house. My cousin, my sister and I, uh, lots of times would walk along this road, go into our little country store, and we would hear these German prisoners singing German songs, which really was interesting. We couldn't understand a word they were singing, but uh, we enjoyed the songs. And they were just as, didn't understand their language and all, but they were very polite. And they'd be chanting and playing ball and hooping and hollering, you know, and all. I, I, I really recall having seen one that wasn't too far from our house. They were so willing to work and they were so grateful for something good to eat. And 
uh, they were they were just real nice people. They, I just thought it was just so bad for them to have to be prisoners. My mother told us that the war was thousands of miles away, and therefore we were not afraid. Mother would not let us look at pictures in the Life magazine of battles that was taking place. She really shielded us children for anything that she thought would frighten us about the war, although she had uh, four brothers and a sister in the war, and we would get letters. And sometimes there would be parts of the letters cut out because they could not tell us where they were over in Europe. We had, I had one uncle that was in Okinawa. Finally, the war was over and uh, they came home and told us a lot of the things then that had, had taken place during the war. But all of the ladies couldn't be shielded from the harsh realities of wartime. The government would give, it was kind of like a, uh, something that the army would hand out for them to write on and, it, and uh, then you can make the envelope out of the, what you wrote the letter on and everything. And I can remember that uh, some, oh, one came home in the mail and it was damaged and everything. And I was afraid to give it to my parents because I thought it was bad news in it. I just, just knew that my brother had been killed or something. But it, uh, but it was, he, he did come home. So he was over there four years. So. But it was very real to me. Some were plenty old enough to work by that time. Some of them had grown up. They had already gone from a time when cotton fields were the second block of downtown Statesboro. They had already gone from a time when the horse, the mule, and train had been replaced by the car. And they had gone from a time when their mothers worked out of the houses and on the farms to a time when women were considered soldiers. When the war began, uh, there were some of the women um, in, in politics who decided that women they've always worked they've always been uh, employed somewhere other nurses or or in some way in wartime but they never got any kind of recognition and they never got any kind of benefits from it yet they spent time through World War One through war, wars earlier women were occupied in some way not not drafted, not uh, joined up or anything other than in their position. And uh, some of the women, when World War II began, decided that women should be recognized and should, be, should receive the benefits of, uh, from, uh, you know, the benefits of the VA provides, that the government provides for soldiers. And this is how the Women's Army Auxiliary Corps was born. And this was the beginning of it. Went in in July of 43, and later that month, the Army decided that they would put the women under the Army completely, so they made it the WAC, the Women's Army Corps. And under that, we were treated exactly as the men were. And women began to take on men's work, for sure, in the Army. <laughs> 